Welcome to r slash malicious compliance, where we share stories of people conforming to the letter but not the spirit of a request. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, cheap maintenance supervisor tries to get me to illegally clone software licenses, when I didn't, costing the business $100,000 in production. The second story, landowner refuses to let family drive into inherited land with a lot of sentimental value. The third story, scammer wanted to deceive me but he failed. And the first story is, no, I will not do that. Oh, leave the site then? Okay. I worked in IT for 15 years as various roles from help desk to field technician to IT manager, now work in telco slash tech sales. I've had requests from customers and employers that were dodgy, illogical, and sometimes illegal just to save money. This is one of the latter. About 10 years ago, I worked for a national manufacturing company that made building products at a plant that made low-pressure laminate boards of all kinds of thicknesses, textures, and designs. Due to the vast array of products running through the three short-cycle laminating lines, the lines were controlled and maintained via various primary logic controllers PLCs. 60 minutes of downtime on alignment, meant $10,000 lost production. Now I was on call at this plant 24-7, by myself, for 5 years with a crew of over 100 plant operators who had been told to call me 24-7 if anything went wrong on the computers or those GD Zebra Labels printers that printed stickers for each pack of board, which meant I was pretty time poor during the day, so started working later and later to work on projects just to keep up. I was young and this was the first in-charge role I'd had, so I was keen to prove myself. One of these projects ended up being an upgrade of the workstations that the electrical engineer and shift electricians used to program changes into the PLC logic itself when there were electrical or mechanical issues that the lines couldn't cope with. These machines were all running software like Rockwell RS Logics and Siemens PLC interfaces. These software packages back then happened to be so old, like the PLCs and machinery on the lines itself, that the software licenses still ran on 3.5-inch floppy disks. The software dongles were loaded to each machine using floppy. In some cases, they could only be activated once. As part of this project, I encountered a critical workstation that had a dead floppy disk drive. This highlighted how dangerous this current method was, as a dead floppy disk could lose a $20,000 license, paid to replace each time, as I was warned early on, before activating. So I quickly used a freeware utility to take a disk image of each floppy drive itself and store them as a backup on my server, and tapes. During this I also learned that I could use this method to illegally clone the licenses to multiple machines. Didn't do so, but I proved it could be done in an emergency. Where I screwed up was telling the electrical engineer how smart I was to avoid a future disaster, who then relayed this to his manager, the maintenance supervisor Bill. Bill was an old school electrician who didn't mind making shortcuts if it got the job done, and considered himself my manager because IT should be treated like the other trades. Never mind I reported to the plant accountant locally, but technically was an IT department employee out of head office. So Bill, having heard from the electrical engineer what I could now do, decides during this upgrade project, and without telling me, that he didn't need to purchase new licenses for these PLC packages. An easy 15-minute online process of providing company details and a purchase order number, because I could just clone them and save us this money. Three machines, $60,000. So he would have looked great on the plant manager. When he then tells me late on a Thursday night as I'm installing the PLC software on the new machine, having deactivated the old license on the old machine, I had a network backup, which he didn't know about, and about to license the new machine. What ensued is your typical I'm older and wiser than you so just do your job, intergenerational argument where both parties believed they were right and neither was backing down. After half an hour of me giving up trying to explain why this was illegal, unethical and not going to happen, Bill finally had enough of my insubordination and ordered me to go home to think about whether I wanted a future in his department. Again, not my manager or even indirect manager. I refused, noting that if there was an issue with the line before I finished the migration, the electricians could not have fixed it, and the line would be down at significant cost. But Bill was the senior manager on site, and exercised his authority to kick me off the site until the next morning. But not before I went to my office, documented everything, and sent it to my manager CC the HR rep to return at 9am. I know why Bill wanted me off site. He thought I could figure out where the backups were stored and install the license himself. A secure hidden share meant that he could not. I left my mobile phone off for the first night in years, considering I was barred from sight, so couldn't attend any issues anywhere and slept like a log. At 9am I walked into the management team in the boardroom, and the plant manager running for me like I had the ball in a World Cup rugby game. Where the heck have you been and why was your effing phone off? 
I was barred from the site until 9 a.m., so changed my voicemail to contact the After Hours team and turned it off so it rang to voicemail immediately. Beeline has been down since you left. We're down over $100,000 from forecast. I'm sorry to hear that, but like I said, I was barred from my site by Bill. I notified plant accountant and HR rep via email last night about this. Go get Beeline back up now. I can't. Bill didn't buy new licenses for the line, so the new machine won't run, and the old license has been deactivated. He says you can copy them. Get the line back up and we'll get it later. I need that request in writing. What you're asking me to do is illegal and in breach of company policies, so I need it recorded. The plant manager went from red face to white face pretty quickly, and then returned to the boardroom to order Bill to order the licenses ASAP. An audit could be initiated by himself, IT, or the vendor at any time, and penalties were known to be severe. Half an hour later, the workstation was licensed, running, and the line humming along to the despair of the plant operators enjoying an extended smoko. Site policies were also changed, so that only the plant manager and HR rep could kick someone off site, and Bill was reminded just who my manager was. The second story is Landlock our land, disrespect a solemn event in our lives, lose a ton of money. My mother in law inherited approximately 50 acres of land, seeded by a beautiful, well known lake. She recalls memories of camping, fishing, swimming, and having wonderful times with her now-deceased brother and family. When she and her brother had children, they continued this tradition and created memories that my husband to this day fondly remembers. Her land was located about five miles from the main highway, and you have to drive through another property owner's land to get to the land. They never had a problem going to and from her property when the previous owners owned the land. In 1995, a local family purchased the land that led into the family property. The current landowner, who will now be known as SOB, told my husband that they could no longer enter my MIL's land. My husband basically begged the landowner for access to the family property. He even volunteered to pay a yearly fee to be able to drive through as an easement to get there. The SOB was adamant, no. My husband's family owns several ranches and have a cattle business on the side. The SOB owns the only feed store in our small town, so we had no other choice but to purchase all our feed from his store. My husband is a businessman and doesn't like to burn bridges. He's a non-confrontational and kind man almost to a fault. Yes, we know that SOB had every right to deny access to MIL's land, but keep in mind that my husband's family is well respected and known in our town. In other words, it's not like we were going to go in there and steal his cattle or loot his property. My MIL's brother passed about 20 years ago. One of his final wishes was for his ashes to be spread on their land at some point in time. The land that brought so much love and joy into his slash their hearts. His children lived out of state, but contacted my MIL to see if they could finally grant their father's dying wish. So again, my husband goes and basically begs SOB to please allow this to happen. SOB was very hesitant. Told hubby that he needed a few days to think about it. Really? Finally, he relented. We were ecstatic. The cousins flew in and prepared to go and spread their dad's ashes along with my MIL and my husband. Out of respect, I didn't even go because IMO, this was something so personal and meaningful, I wanted to give them their space. As my husband, his cousins, and MIL drove up to the gate, SOB was waiting to open it. Fair enough. As they drove five miles in, they were finally there. The land that they so loved and missed. Just as they were about to begin their sacred ritual, they turned and saw SOB not 20 yards away at the gate. Not even then could he give our family the dignity and respect that they so greatly deserved by giving them their privacy. Fast forward to present day, the land that surrounds SOB's land goes up for sale. My MIL requested a surveyor to see exactly how the land was positioned. Almost like a puzzle, my MIL husband and his siblings were able to find a way to see exactly how they could finally find access to their beloved property. However, she was going to have to pay big money to purchase the land that was adjacent to SOB's land. She finally decided to buy the property. But finally, we come and go as we please. Now what you've all been waiting for, the revenge. My MIL also inherited other properties scattered throughout the country. My husband and I built our home on one of said properties. We have no access to a sewerage system, so we had to get a septic tank. Then all of a sudden we see signs on our property that the commissioner's court was going to finally provide our area with a sewage system. The contractors presented their plan to install this system to the commissioner's court and the big company that's going to work on this huge project. The project was approved and given the go-ahead. Here's the kicker. They were going to have to go through our property, where my house sits, to be able to run the lines to complete the sewerage system. Everything was going to be affected if this went through. Our landscaping was going to be ruined. Jackhammering at 6 a.m. was sure to be in the foreseeable future. A fun summer for our three boys. Swimming, barbecues, get-togethers was basically over for the summer. It was going to look like a junkyard for at least 9 to 12 months. Even though our home sits on this property, it's still under MIL's name. Being from a small town, Lord knows why they approved this project without her consent or signature. 
I guess these people thought, ah, this is a small town where everyone knows everyone. We're sure we can do this and she won't give us a hard time. Well, guess who the main contractor was? That's right, SOB. When I found out, I called my mother-in-law and told her, I don't think I have to tell you where our revenge lies. My MIL went to commissioner's court and demanded to know why this project was approved without her consent. They couldn't come up with even a half a answer. As it turns out, they had to have an emergency meeting and the proposal was denied. They had to rearrange the logistics to be able to complete this job in any way they could, but it definitely wasn't going to take place anywhere near her or our property. From what we understand, the county and the big company was livid with SOB for presenting this without her signature. I'm not even sure how in the world this was overlooked and approved without her consent. I'm sorry for our county, but it cost them thousands of dollars to reconfigure the mapping of the project, and they chose to go with another contractor. SOB was fired. The last story is… What's on your screen right now? I received an unsolicited call earlier this morning from a gentleman named Dan. Dan worked for Microsoft Security and was calling to let me know that my computer had been downloading malicious software and because I was such a loyal customer, he would be walking me through the steps to remove the software and fix my computer. In case you didn't guess, Dan did not work for Microsoft, my computer was not infected and he was not going to help me. Our conversation began. Dan, are you near your computer right now? Me, yes, why? Dan, I'd like to help you check it for issues. Me, okay, give me a minute. At this point, I spent a couple of minutes finding my laptop and getting it booted up. Really, it only took about 20 seconds, but Dan didn't need to know this. Once I was at my laptop, Dan continued. Dan, what do you see on your screen right now? Me, what was that? I wanted to make sure I heard his question correctly. Dan, what do you see on your screen right now? Me, well, I see my desktop. At this point, Dan tried to continue with his script, but I had not told Dan everything that was on my screen, so I continued. Me, there's a clock in the bottom left corner. The time says 10.30 a.m. The date is December 3rd, 2017. There's a Wi-Fi signal with full bars. There's a volume meter, but I have it muted right now. There is a battery indicator showing my laptop is 27% charged. Dan tried in vain to interrupt me, but there were still more things to tell him. Me, there's an icon called My Computer, an icon called Recycle Bin, an icon called Google Chrome. You can see where this is going. I proceeded to read off to Dan each and every icon, shortcut, folder, and file that was currently displayed on my screen. Dan never got a chance to get a word in edgewise. Finally, after about four or five minutes of meticulously letting Dan know exactly what was on my screen, he asked me a question. Dan, can you right-click on my computer? Me, sure, no problem. Do you know where that would be located? Dan, it should be on your desktop. Me, I know, but I can't find it. Do you remember what it was next to when I described everything to you? Dan, it should be next to Recycle Bin. Me, no, Google Chrome is next to the Recycle Bin. After a few more minutes, Dan successfully navigated me into the start menu to open up a run box. Dan, okay, there should be a field in the run box. Is it empty? Me, no, it has something written already. Dan, what does it say? Me, the first one says MS Info 32, the second one says CMD, the third one says Reg Edit. After going through all the items in my run box history, 11 to 12, Dan let me know that he would need to call me back in a few minutes. Despite my pleas for help, Dan hung up. Apparently, I wasn't supposed to follow his directions so well. I hope you guys love these stories. Don't forget to subscribe if you want to know when the new video comes out.